there are a few rules to keep in mind when we're using sig figs and mathematical operations. The first rule involves multiplication and division. This is the rule that you will be using most of the time in chemistry. And here it is. When multiplying or dividing, the answer must have the same number of sig figs as does the quantity with the fewest sig figs. In other words, whenever we're multiplying or dividing, we need to get our fingers out and count the sig figs in this quantity, count the sig figs in that one, count the sig figs in that one, whatever we're multiplying or dividing, and whatever the smallest number that we come up with is, that's how many significant figures we need to have in our answer. So let's try an example. Here we're going to divide one quantity by another. This first quantity has three significant figures. This next one has four. So we're going to type this into our calculator and we're going to round it to three significant figures, which is what this answer in blue has. You can convince yourself of that by doing the box and dot method. If I draw the box around the four and the four and the three, recall that any zero on the left side of the box is never significant. Therefore, this answer has three significant figures because we followed the rule. If we try another example, here we're multiplying two quantities and then dividing by a third. This quantity on the left has three significant figures. The one in the middle also has three, but this one has two. Well, two is the smallest, so we would type that into our calculator and round to two significant figures. Again, feel free to do the box and dot method on this answer, and hopefully that will convince you that that answer does have two significant figures. Incidentally, we could put all of these answers in scientific notation if we wanted, but I've written them in standard form for no particular reason. The second rule with sig figs and math operations involves addition and subtraction. Now we don't use this rule nearly as often, but we still need to know it because when we do need to use it, we need to use it properly. So rule number two is when adding or subtracting, the answer must be rounded to the place value of the least precise quantity. In other words, whenever we're adding and subtracting, we're not going to get our fingers out and count up sig figs in this quantity and that one. We're simply looking at place value and that's it. So in this first example, this first quantity is rounded to the hundredths place, two places past the decimal. This next quantity is rounded to the tenths place, only one place past the decimal. Which of those is less precise? And that would be the tenths place. So when we type this into our calculator, we're going to round our answer to that tenths place. Notice that we're not counting up significant figures. Let's try the one on the bottom. This quantity on the left is rounded to the hundredths place. This quantity here is rounded to the thousandths place. And this quantity on the right is rounded to the ten thousandths place. Which of those is the least precise? Well, that would be the hundredths place. So we're just going to type that as is into our calculator, but we're going to make sure we round it to the hundredths place. The third rule is because conversion factors are exact numbers, they do not affect the number of sig figs. Your answer should have the same number of sig figs as does the quantity you start with. And some negative examples of this can be found in any consumer product. This is a picture of some deodorant and if you look at what's in this yellow box, three ounces has one sig fig, 85 grams has two, and if this had been done properly, they would have the same number of significant figures. So what's in this yellow box is wrong. Here's another one. This is from some nutrition label. You can see I've boxed it in in green. It says that one cup is 236 milliliters. Well, maybe 1.00 cups equals 236 milliliters, but one cup equal to 236 milliliters, technically that's not how we should represent it 
if we're trying to present our work in a scientific fashion. And this one is particularly egregious. A certain number of gallons converted into a certain number of liters. This would have been very simple if we would have put a decimal point in two zeros. See how much better that looks. Whenever you convert between one unit and another unit, you should have the same number of sig figs at the end as you had at the beginning. Let's summarize mathematical operations for significant figures. When multiplying or dividing, count sig figs and round your answer to the fewest number of sig figs. This is the rule you will use most of the time. When adding or subtracting, don't count sig figs. Look at the place values and round your answer to the least precise place value. And finally, when converting, your converted quantity should have the same number of sig figs as does the quantity you started with.